our uh, <coughs> tooling series here, we're going to talk about drill bits, regular twist drill bits. And they call them twist, uh, the drill bit twists, but also when they made them way back many years ago, they made them by twisting. When steel was a big deal to get, they actually would take just a flat piece of bar, twist it. And it didn't have all of this extra thick forged out area. It was just literally twisted a little bit of a margin on the side, maybe. Now, what are the parts of our drill when we're talking about cutting? We have got a little part there. And we just kind of do this like, and it cuts there. And then I'm going to put a dead center there. And on the opposite side, we have it coming out like this. And we have a little bit of a bump there. And then this continues on around for a little bit and back into there. And this one continues on around and back into there. It should yeah, come up a little more. That's not real good, but hey, you got to have imagination when you're following me anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, several things about this. One is this part out here, which is called the margin. And that's right there on the drill bit. That's the widest part of the drill bit. That is the part that both sizes the drill bit and it sizes it because it's also the widest part of this cutting edge. This is where the cutting takes place right here. And the other thing that it does is it is, it's actually round with the bore. It's not made with clearance behind it. So it is also a guide. Mm. And you will see when these are badly sharpened way off one side to the other and you just keep working them and working them. And these can be off a little bit without uh, hurting things most of the time. It's more critical the larger the drill bit is. Uh, this one here was actually machine sharpened at some time. Most of the time we sharpen them by hand. And we do not have a sharpener for, uh, as far as a, a guided one, for drill bits this big. But uh, as they get off to one side, it will wear a lot on the margin. Or if the drill has just been used a lot besides the cutting edge, which you normally sharpen, you always need to start out by looking at the margin. Is the margin full size? If it's worn down inside here, and we'll, we'll find some out in the shop when we go to looking at actual ones that will uh, sharpen. If it's worn down in there, then it's not going to cut good. Because okay. that's just trying to wedge the metal more than make a nice cut right here. And there's, you can cheat, you know, a huge drill bit. You do things to cheat sometimes. If it's worn way down in there and you're like, oh shoot, I just got to enlarge this hole. You can take and relieve it back along this whole surface and make it cut again. Because that's like, uh, instead of sharpening to this angle, you are sharpening to a steeper angle just for part of it. Right. Which saves you having to sharpen the whole face back down. Cutting in, um, well, there's a relief angle on the side here. So, and this relief ideally uh, is on the side, it's kind of like that. Again, we're starting at our margin. And then the tips going, it's not very good. The tip would be coming back into here. And we'd have, and I keep dry, drawing the dead center in blue because we need to look at it a little bit different than the rest of the bit. The reason being that the dead center of the bit, it doesn't cut. If you look at it, it's just a chisel in its in its native form in a way that a lot of people sharpen bits we will go out here now for a, a bigger bit like this because what that will do is it'll just smush the metal as it comes around it won't really want to cut it in that that middle portion so it takes a lot of pressure on a big drill bit what you usually do is you pre-drill the center right so you'll drill a pilot hole uh, when i first was learning machine work the people that i was learning from said you're Pilot drill should be half the size of your drill bit. And that's kind of not a real good real rule. <laughs> it sounded good. I had somebody else at a shop say, yeah, stupid kids learning stuff in school. Long time ago. Okay. 
because I told him, you know, he said, all you got to have is one that's big enough to go across the center. Uh, okay. okay. Well, there's some truth to that and some not truth to that. The truth is there's different reasons for different size pilot drills. Um, enough to go across the center. Okay, we can start drilling. But now our material in here really should be turning at a faster speed than what's out here the RPM, because we're closer to the center, it should be a higher RPM. So for efficiency, we may want to step this as we drill it anyway. You know, it's not just about making a hole, but we also want to do it somewhat efficiently. Right. So by using different drill bits, we can remove the metal with not just the one for the pilot drill, but next one up somewhere out here that's running at a higher speed, get rid of a lot of material and drop the speed down for the bigger one. So by stepping it, we're, we're more efficient with our time. The other thing that happens is you may be in a situation where you don't have the horsepower. You're going to have to have the reduction, enough, enough gearing uh, to where you can turn this, but you may not have the horsepower to turn a bit and take that cut all at once. You have another problem with taking a cut all at once is that if you get out here where there's just a little bit of this left, this will want to progress forward really easy into the hole. So even though it doesn't take as much horsepower for your drilling, since it tries to take a bigger bit, a bigger bite for each turn, it is harder to turn it and you may not be able to turn it on your particular drill. So what you do, and, and you really run into that with aluminum and brass. And that part of that is you see your, your uh, rake angle your rake angle here, the same as your top angle would be for a lathe bit, but it's in a drill bit position. If this was being used on a lathe trying to turn, it would be this way. That rake angle decides how much it wants to pull into the material as it cuts. So okay. if, it, if this, instead of having a flute running around this way, which it's still a flute even if it's straight, but if it had a, instead of a twist, if it had a straight flute, it wouldn't want to pull in at all. It would just be a cutting angle. And this generally works pretty good for steel. Um, it will mostly work for brass, but sometimes you get too much feed. And what you can do is you can take just the very edge where you've sharpened it so that it cuts real good. And you can actually flatten this back a little bit so that you make just, you don't want to go way down or you just ruin a whole bunch of the drill. But you just take that and you grind a flat along there and it reduces your margin out here and brings your cutting edge back but you can change that first cutting angle so it doesn't want to pull in so bad. Because once it's cut, the chips that hit back here that are already cut, they're not going to pull you in. It's just the very front. And if you do too much, it doesn't take much. If you do too much, then it really becomes hard to get the drill to go in. But you can do that for brass and especially for aluminum because these will many times just try and suck in to where they'll pull out of the chuck. Uh, an interesting thing, this drill bit is not one I've ever used. It came with a bunch of stuff we bought last year from another shop that uh, is no longer in business. And I see, uh, I've seen this a couple times, but not very often. Somebody had welded a little chunk on the shank here so that when they put this in a drill chuck, it would have something extra to grab. It's a round shank, and that's, that's the only reason they did that. You can see where the <clears throat> jaw of the chuck is right there. They just did that to make sure that it would grab and definitely turn this this uh, drill which is pretty big for the shank size. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? It's an idea. <laughs> um, if I needed to do it I would. Uh, the more common one you'll also see is people put flats on the drill mm. uh, and they come, some of them come with flats. The problem with putting flats on it or this either one, one of the problems is you can't put it in a collet anymore. You know, it, it will not go in a smooth hole. So then you got to grind that back off. Another problem with putting flats on is if you're not, don't take lots of time and put them on carefully, now your drill bit's wobbling and walking around and, and wearing out and not cutting good because it's, it's not true. Right. So um, those are our problems there. Now with this, grind that we've got here when you normally try to make that grind what you will do what we do is we'll come in here oh, i got all these colors i'm going to use black just because i want to well that's not the color of our wheel but we have a grinding wheel and as we come into our grinding wheel a lot of people you'll see will just go back and forth across the wheel 
which moving to different places across the wheel is good to distribute your wear on the wheel. The best is to dress it. Um, we'll, we'll talk about dressing the wheel a little bit, specifically for grinding uh, drill bits when we get over to the actual grinder. But as you move that back and forth, or some people go on a flat surface, um, you're gonna have either just a straight angle here, which is not terrible, but what you really get here a lot of times with the wheel is you get a curve in this. So that curve will mean that this part here is a little higher than you wanna be dragging instead of having a smooth curve. Now this smooth curve, if you have a very short, uh, very tight curve, nearly flat, this will stop it from biting in too much per revolution also. It'll still let it bite in really quick and take all of whatever the depth from here to where it hits, whatever that depth is, it'll still let it take it all at once and it still can jerk in and cause problems, but it has a maximum amount per revolution that it will feed forward. If you grind this way really steep, then it can feed in a lot. Normally I tend to grind them a little steeper than what they're supposed to be because I want them to grind. I want them to drill. That's, that's my normal just go-to thing I do. Sometimes I do make sure that I get them flatter. Flatter is harder because either side can stop it and it just is, is harder to get just a clearance without a lot of clearance to where it works like a raker. Same thing as on a chainsaw sharpening. You have rakers that stop it from going forward. Yeah. Um, so what, what we do, as long as when you come in here, you are above center or on center. And the ideal is that you come in to center and then you swing with your hands, you swing the drill bit up and that makes this curve. Okay. Now you can do that. You know, there's, that's what the machine that usually goes against a flat surface. That's what the machine does. Now, another thing I've seen people do where they don't have a grinder, and I've sharpened drill bits out in the field on a nine inch grinder, but you really want a four inch, you know, so, so seven's about right as far as a nice. If you can, yeah, never having done it before, clamp it down, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> clamp it down with a C, C clamp. I just stand on it with my foot now because I've done it for over, well over 30 years. Don't do that. <laughs> It's, I did get some nicks in my fingers the first few times while I was doing this, even with a C-clamp method. It's, it's not the safest, but when you're in a field, you don't have anything else, a disc grinder will work. A disc sander, and I see a lot of people talking about sharpening drill bits with sanders, it doesn't work good at all. The thing with the sander, and especially any kind of a flapping disc, but um, a flat disc is better than some of the others, but a sanding material is, it's on a soft backing. So as it comes here to sharpen this, it's always going to, until it hits the actual point that it's grinding away, it's going to move a little bit and it's gonna leave you with a little bit of a dull surface on the very start of it. It's not gonna be as sharp as what you can be with a rigid wheel. Your rigid wheel from a disc grinder doesn't have to be anything fancy, doesn't have to be super smooth, it's nicer, but um, the, the flapping, flap discs, flat sanding pads, the glue on ones are, are probably the best if you're gonna go with something that sands, but a belt sander is bad. A, and I'm, it, it will sharpen to some extent, but it won't be as sharp and good cutting as it should be. It's, it's definitely not the preferred. So what we wanna do is we wanna roll in here at center line and we wanna roll this up. now. Um, when we do that over on the grinder, what I do is I find a place, and you have to be real careful because this part back here, even though it's not super sharp, it will cut your finger. Um, and usually you can do this better with a bare finger than with a glove. And you lay your finger on, or two fingers, on the rest. And what you do is you pivot out of a point in the flute. And by doing that, when you come in here, and it takes... When we first learned this in uh, college <clears throat> over 40 years ago, when I first was learning this, it took me about a half an hour every day they would have me drill, grind drill bits for two weeks. And I hated every bit of it. And I got to where I could sort of do it at the end of that. It takes a while to really get into this. But once you do, it's nice to be able to walk over to a grinder and just make it work. The reason being, 
you use the drill flute itself as your index. When you find this perfect place here, and it's not as critical as people would think uh, where you end up. You do have to not end up below center because if you first touch in below center, and that also where center is, whether we come in here or here, it's in relation to the center line of the drill itself. If we're, uh, normally we think of it as coming straight in here where you have an above and a below, but obviously if we tip it and come in at a different point, then we've redefined where center is. So, um, I forget where I was going there with that. Anyway, we, we want to come in at the right point on the center, and then when we turn it, this is the thing, yes, when you turn it, once you find that set, you re-feel so that you can feel the same point on these flutes. And it seems like kind of a joke, but you find the same point. You go, and, and, I, and you, I wouldn't do this one just by feel like that. This is a big bit. It's out here so that we could show. That's what you do on a 5 eighths inch, maybe a 3 quarter inch, on down to a uh, 3 eighths. Under 3 eighths, it's hard to feel. Over 3 quarter, it's hard to feel but you can feel a grip on the flute that's identical. So you just roll this over and that allows you to get the two sides with the same grind so that they match without a gauge or anything. Um, now, there's also discussion about angle. The angle is the angle between the two sides. So we have this cutting edge, this, too many things in my hand, but we'll still make it work this cutting edge and you have this one here that's going, this one cutting away from you, this one cutting towards you. They're both cutting edges. And the angle is the angle in between here. Old magic that people used to say was 118. Some go as high as 135 today. Why different angles? Uh, there's different angles because of the cu direct cutting aspect of the bit a little bit, but the bigger thing that happens is different bits have different web thicknesses. A thicker web, you want to grind it flatter. And that's just the way it works out to get a good, good geometry on the center point, the dead center. Okay. And it's really not so much a matter of, you, you talk about people will be advertising and selling high quality 135 degree drill bits. Well, if it was meant to be a 135 degree drill, drill bit, it's going to have more cobalt, more tungsten, more alloys in it. It's going to be a, a harder steel, but it's also going to be a little more breakable. So they're going to make the flute thicker. And when the flute gets thicker, then they widen out this angle there. It's actually getting flatter so that it's got, uh, so, so that it makes up for that thickness there. And the thickness is there so that it doesn't break when you twist it because it's a little bit more brittle, even though it's a lot harder and, it's, and the alloys allow it to not be super brittle, it's still a little bit more brittle than the ones without those extra additives. You will find the gamut on this stuff. You'll find really cheap drill bits that are thin. You'll find cheap alloy drill bits today that are thick so that it looks like they're a good drill bit. You will find some with medium alloy that are still made like the, the uh, thin ones. Uh, it used to mean something. It still does in the fact that you have to look at it, and if it's thicker, uh, it needs to be ground a little bit flatter to work right. Um, that's the big thing with that. The other thing is, if we are more pointed, back down in the 118 degree, if, especially if we have variable speed, we have an easier time of starting the hole by itself or guiding into a pilot hole. It will follow the hole better where if it's flatter, it will do a better job of guiding in the hole that it has made itself once it starts cutting. Okay. And a better job of following the, the bearing location, that is, of the full diameter. On the other hand, though, it's still going to try and follow where the center point starts it. The, the guiding that can happen after that, if you start in a hole but you have a pilot hole that goes over here but you're started in here and your pilot is crooked it was drilled different two different setups it will not follow the pilot hole and it will not go straight it will kind of go between them and wear and mess things up it 
it, it sometimes you can get enough to where it'll override the pilot hole. You know, if there's a, if it's a really small pilot hole, but if you start out and it gets down here to where the pilot hole is essentially a hole off to one side, it's going to slowly walk a little bit that way and cause some wear. Um, then when we come in here to grind the dead center, and that's called splitting the point. To split the point, now we're going to look at this black wheel from the face here. And we're going to get rid of the angle there because it's in our way. So when we're looking at, at the face of the wheel, if we want to grind on that, the way we split this center, and again, this one is too big, but it's really pretty simple, and it is something you want to do for most of your drills you're going to sharpen at home because you want it to drill in easier. Um, if you split the point well, you can actually use a three-quarter inch without a pilot on steel and drill through it with a hand drill. It's a little tough. Um, use the side handle, and until you get used to it, even that could twist your wrist and break your wrist if you're not tough enough. I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's one of those things. Um, line up this dead center, and it will not be in a specific, each grind and twist of uh, the form of the bit itself will be a little bit different. But what you always want to do is line up that dead center with the side of the wheel. And then you come into the wheel and you're, you're trying to come in about its center line. So you tip into the wheel and you start grinding until your wheel makes a notch and it will grind away some of this back here and it will grind your center. You want to grind it about halfway. And it's pretty easy lining up the first side doing that. What's hard, and if you have other parts of the flute or something you can grab to help index you a little better, is <clears throat> easier. What's hard is coming back to the second side the same. Because when you're doing the second side after you've gone halfway through this, remember this is a bigger drill bit than what we're going to work on. When you come halfway through on the drill bit, now you don't have much of a line there to, drip, to line up with for where you should be on the side of the uh, the, the wheel. You can, you know, and that's what I'm saying, rotationally you want to be in line with it too. It's not just position, you want both. You want to be position, you want to be straight up and down, and you, you uh, to get to rotation, so you have this place here and you're like, okay, my finger is there, come back around, put this in the same place to get it lined up with the side of the wheel again. Then come in and just come to where you meet the center of the previous grind. Now, if you don't quite get them both to center, it'll still cut because you've made the dead center really small. So even though there's a, a little bit of dead center left, it's not much. It's mostly making cutting edges that will start cutting. Um, if you come over center, it will also still cut, but it'll chip and break a little bit at the center. So you really don't want to come over center, but sometimes you do. Uh, I wouldn't reject the bit for that. I'd just go drill some holes because holes are sort of a crude thing we do. We normally do more exacting stuff later on. And I think that's the basic here. I just turned that on to see, see how we would do with that one for starters. Our grinder here, we've got a coarse wheel, a fine wheel. That's nice to have in case you've got a drill bit that's really mucked up. And we will try and find one that's a little mucked up. That's probably an average homeowner size drill. It would be nice to have something slightly bigger, a little easier to see, but not huge. There's a good one to see. Yeah, here's a good one to see. And actually this one, in relation to its size, has got a pretty thick web and it needs to be ground fairly flat. You can't really see that right now, but when we go to redo it, you will notice it in relation to its size. It's a little thicker in the middle. This is more of a normal thickness there. Um, this coarse grinding wheel, if we needed to um, really come in, and we'll do a little bit of it on this one, we can too, where you just want to get rid of what's there. You just just don't really even worry about your form of how you're grinding it. You just grind it and get, get somewhat of an angle yet. Also, we've got some little owies here on where it's been chucked. Sometimes it's nice to leave those 
if it's straight overall because it does the same thing that the weld did. So sometimes if you have a couple of them that are pretty much in line and when you chuck it, you remember to chuck it outside of where those are pulled up, it gives it something to stop against. Other times, you know you're going to use it in a collet. You want to come in and take your nice wheel and just get rid of them so it will fit in a collet. The uh, other thing here was on the dressing. Dressing your wheel, okay? Best way to dress a wheel is probably not something that most people are going to do. Best way to dress a wheel is with a single point diamond and you'll have some kind of a guide that comes here. And we do that with our precision surface grinder. We, uh, on that one there, we don't have an overhead grinder, an overhead dresser. We, on that one, you move the table, but some way that you move it in a nice, consistent method. Some of these, uh, they make a tool that guides along the rest. And from what I've found is those tools that guide along the rest move too much. Uh, it, it doesn't make it as nice as you can. I've, I've had some results with that. I have had in some places where we put a groove in here, milled a nice groove, made a nice table with a little screw and a feeder, and that's wonderful. That works the best. It's a lot of work to set it all up and keep it in good shape and clean, the, the grit coming back to it. I haven't bothered to set one up here, but I have set them up at other shops where I work for other people. But that's the single point. And you can see a couple of things. There's three things that happen with your wheel that is why you want to dress it. One is the wheel gets dull. Inside the wheel, there's little grains of cutting material and they get dull sometimes. So you want to dress it back so you've got fresh cutting material that's not dull. Another thing that happens is it gets out of round. Mm. So when it comes to getting out of round, and that's why I'll talk about the second type of dresser, which we pretty much don't have here. There might be one or two kicking around, but we pretty much don't have them because they're garbage. That's your normal one you buy at the hardware store, and it's a star wheel dresser. And I've even seen them on precision grinders, especially in the automotive field. The star wheel grinder works by poking into the wheel as it turns. It's little wheels that turn. And as it turns, it rips a piece out, and it follows with the wheel. And the big problem with those is they won't make the wheel any closer to running true. And that's what is... You know, this one here, everything guided, and you'll see that this wheel here does not run true right now. It's got some run out to it. And it will have some run out to it after I get done dressing it because I'm not gonna hold, uh, it, it will. It's just part of the not perfect dressing. If you have a perfect single point diamond, it's here, and that will get rid of that. And this does the best job. Part of that is coming in because of balance of the wheel. The wheel is gonna shake here. Um, an ideal situation, and you do that on precision grinders, but is if you have some way to balance these. Some people have built, they'll take and make a special side plate here, and you, they put set screws in there so that you can balance it, because the wheels are not precision balanced in itself. You have to have some way to make up for the out of balance of the wheel. It's just like a tire. It's this cast thing with rocks and sand and glass and everything in it. It's not balanced but they put a lot of set screws in here that you can pull out, put in, just, just set in. You don't make them where you can touch the wheel or you break the wheel, but they just go into a little hub that's bigger, thicker, so you can put those in and balance it. Yeah. And it works, but it's a lot of work. So very few people do that for a normal grinder, normal bench grinder. Now, the third one, which these wear away, third common one, is these, uh, and they make expensive ones, but I just buy the cheapies and use them for a while, and when they quit working, it's several little diamonds in a surface here. And so in itself, it's somewhat flat and helps you a little bit, and um, it's an intermediate way. It's not perfect, but it's the best I've found. Um, I'm not gonna bother doing a review on these. These ones have came, some of them came from eBay years ago, some have came from, Amazon, some came direct from China on AliExpress. The reality is every time I get a batch, they're different. I'll get a batch and they're wonderful. I'll buy a batch from the same brand, same people, and it doesn't have garbage in it for diamond. And it just goes away after the first time I try it. So we're not gonna do a review on these because none of the people that put them out seem to be consistent. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if it's got somebody's fancy name on it or not, unless it was actually a U.S. or, you know, made in Sweden or whatever that cost you $200. So these ones normally are like six bucks. Um, unless you're buying the high-end ones, I haven't seen a difference that you can depend upon. I have seen a difference, but not anything I can depend upon. So I'm going to go ahead and dress that. I don't like all the dust from the dressing and it doesn't need to be perfect for me, so I'm not going to dress it all the way down. But you can see, oh, and I forgot that. I forgot the other reason for dressing it is to remove the particles that are stuck in here. Not just a matter of it being dull, but also particles that are stuck in here. And actually, if you've got one that's, you've done a lot of grinding with uh, aluminum on here, um, that's where those star dressers do sometimes break those chunks of aluminum out of a wheel that was not meant for grinding aluminum. And most of them, even the ones meant for it, don't really grind well. They still fill up. Um, that's the one place where those star dressers do work better than the others. Mm, but great. we don't fill these up with aluminum. So, um, and when they fill up with brass, those don't work better. It's only when they're filled up with aluminum that they work a little better than the others. And it's such a small amount better. I don't, I don't bother having them. Now I was doing pretty high pressure. If I want to try and make it rounder, I'll reduce my pressure so that I'm not going so much with the shape of the wheel, but knocking off the higher spots. Again, having an actual guide is what would make it the best. Need, you want some kind of water to cool off the bit uh, as you grind on it for two reasons. One is changing the heat treating of it. Now, if you grind it and you get it super hot and you quench it in the water, you could be doing damage to the bit and making it more brittle because this is an air-cooled steel originally. But it's air-cooled with an air blast on it, an air fan. So if it slowly cools once it gets too hot, then you've made it a little softer. If you quench it in water, you potentially make the edge where it wants to break. The best is to leave it like it was for heat treating and just don't get it over about 500 degrees which you don't want to hang on to it at that point. And that's the other reason why you want to cool it off. We're doing this by hand. Now, you can do it with welding gloves on, and then it's not as critical to, to cool it as often, but you'll still do damage to the bit. Just grinding it just like I would any old ugly piece of steel at this point. And I'm going to come back and mint and see. It's not quite as thick as I can, but you can see how it's a little bit thicker than a lot of your drill bits in between there okay. in the absolute metal. You can see it now that there's no, no uh, clearance in the point, no splitting of the point. And that's part of when we put the, post this, we need to mention that we're not just sh uh, showing drill bit sharpening. Drill bit sharpening and you know our words are, um, which we didn't mention that this is the relief in here, the part behind the margin as far as uh, the names. This is just the relief area. It's not like a relief angle, it's a relief. Okay. And this is the margin, is the part right on the very front. And this one here, in fact, actually, this one is, uh, I was gonna sharpen it to show, but actually, I don't know if we can see that. Do you see how the margin is worn there? Yeah. Does the camera see that? That's what I don't know till I look at it on the big screen. It should, but if it doesn't, you are you can take, sharpen it? You, no, I'm not going to sharpen it because the reality is to sharpen this bit, and while we could to show people the rest of it, it's a good one, but we'd have to take it all the way back. See where it's still brown color and mm -hmm. it's not shown? We'd have to grind it off right there. Holy crap. And to actually do a nice sharpening. So what we would do, we could use this for drilling in some garbage right away, and this side here is even worse. Yeah, no, this, wow. this is probably a bad bit. 
I've gotten some of them that were supposed to be good cobalt bits that are not, they're phony. And I think this is probably one of them. This one is basically best to go in the garbage. Uh, by the time we cut it off here, you don't want to grind it back to there. You cut it off. And you cut it off with an abrasive chop saw. Again, you got to watch a little bit not getting it too hot. Um, but yeah, that's, that one's not, not worth sharpening. It's just garbage. And you can have it to take pictures of if you need to put a picture in there to make that clear to see. This one, the margin is pretty decent on yet. It's just a little bit of wear right at the top. So you can see where it's mostly has its height. It's not all gouged and worn down on the sides. But I need to find another one, for example. So let's grab in our drawer full of bits. Here is one that's messed up. This is a half inch bit. And it's messed up in the front, but the margins are good. The margin is good starting just back here behind where it's, where it's dull at the actual front. <laughs> Using my re regular drill bit grinding method now, Keeps it closer to shape. Um, this one's not quite as bad as the other one was. But I'm not going to explain again what I'm doing at that point because I'm still just trying to rough it. Yeah. Okay, now we'll, we'll go on our good wheel. And your good wheel for your final finish is generally, it's, it's a finer wheel as part of it. Plus you keep it in better shape. You can see how when I ground that, there's just a little bit of a rolled relief, even with just doing it cr crude here. And that's, it just takes years to learn that. And to see if you're right for left or right, you just spin it in your hand and eyeball, does it look like it's in the center? It takes developing a machinist's eye. And with your eye, you're not gonna make it perfect, but when you get used to doing it, you'll be within three, four thousandths of center. Okay. It's close enough for most of the time, just drilling a hole. Um, we have the regular setup over there, one of the good ones with the CBN wheel and all the, um, I forget, Derex. Ner yeah, Derex. These are actually pretty good. I don't like their, their cheaper ones, uh, but that's, that's a $2,000 grinder by the time you get the CBN wheel for it. And it works pretty good. You have to learn how to use it. I forget how to use it. What we'll do is every now and then we'll have somebody come through here, we'll learn how to use it again, and we'll sharpen a bunch of them with it. And it does a decent job. But you can get sloppy and get off a couple thousands by letting things ride up, because it's still a feel to keep it in the, in the slots, even though it has little cams that make it do that twist that I'm doing with my hands. So that cam does that. But still, if you don't hold it, it can move up and down, you can get off a little bit too. And, uh, it just, for most of the time, it takes more time when you want to sharpen a drill bit, it's not worth messing with. Most of our drills in here are sharp right now because a couple of years ago we went through, and we have thousands of drills. We went through and, and had Mark sharpen all of our smaller drill bits, but Mark is no longer with us. Mark is now a driller. No, wait a sec, no, no, Mark is a, I don't know what the heck Mark's doing. He's changed lots of things. No, not a driller, I was thinking of Brad. Too many people have been here before. They're good hands, but they go off and do other things, you know? <laughs> okay, so you pick an angle that looks good to you. You come in and you swing up. Do the same on the other side. And while you're doing this, the first couple times, you sort of get used to laying in the same place. And you keep going until you'll see that you have a grind spark all the way across the point where you're touching off the bit. And then you look at it and see, do I have a good grind across there? Do I have a relief coming back? And this one looks fairly good. Then I look at it and see, does it look centered to me? If it doesn't look centered to me, which this one does look centered, then I go and I grind a little bit more on one side and then I start over. Now, Again, with this coming in at center. Now, it doesn't matter if the edge of the wheel is rounded when we do this splitting the point. 
if it's rounded, it just means we don't go in quite as far. You don't, don't imagine a square corner on the wheel. See where it actually goes to with whatever shape the wheel is cutting. But what matters is coming in just equal with that side, just in line with it, and we come straight in. That's getting a little bit warm already, so I'm going to quit because this one needs a little, little bit more grinding on the back to get it to cut good. And don't go too far with your finger or you'll grind your, your finger off. Then turn it 180. Before I turn it 180, we can see that one by itself. You can see I'm coming in here and I haven't quite made it to center. I'm a little shy of center and there's a little bit of a radius where it's hitting at the point. And what you also will see is underneath here where it used to be a dead center, now we have a new cutting edge that started right there. So it's got a new little cutting edge that will, as that turns, actually cut. Mm. So that's the whole point of splitting the point. And I'm going to take that one forward just a little bit more. Then I will turn it over. And then we have a little bit that's left. It's still got what looks like a dead center there, but it's not because we have a cutting edge at the front of it here. There's a cutting edge right there that cuts and a cutting edge on this side that cuts. You still have a line you can draw across there, but it's not a thick line and it has points that will cut and that will drill pretty well. We might even take it over to drill press and drill to show that it really does. We'll do the same thing with a uh, smaller bit that we had here. When you're doing this, you can kind of tune yourself to where center is and left, right and stuff as you're going back and forth from side to side once you get on to this. And I thought it was totally stupid when they first, I was like, ah, hard, tough, not that valuable. It's just a drill bit by drill bits. <laughs> well, yeah, as you end up owning a shop someday or working for other people that don't want to just buy drill bits every time you uh, open the door in the morning, then you learn this stuff. Okay. And actually, we'll drill with this one without a pilot hole out here. And I'll leave you all the, the drill bits when we're done, even if we might mess this one back up by chipping it or something. but. Um, we'll drill with it, and uh, then you can take individual pictures of those. Normally, even though this is a split point drill bit, and we'll drill this way, uh, normally drilling by hand, I would still want to pilot drill it just because I don't have to push as hard. But to show what you can do with this, we'll just drill right in here. And... I guess we'll keep you out of the oil, which is good. If you're going at higher speeds, water soluble is a better choice because it will take the heat away more, but the oil is better for slower speed drilling. Okay, it was given a good bite, cutting in, and there we finished it. Just with a hand drill, all comes down to sharpening it. <clears throat> now, um, we'll leave you that drill. Let's, let's, while we're dealing with uh, sharpening drill bits, we might as well make this all of the, there's always something we forget, but let's do another one too. We'll give you that drill bit, which I don't think we whacked it up yet. It sharpened, ran straight, drilled good. I'm gonna grab another drill bit and we will sharpen one on a disc grinder just to show the way that you don't wanna do it at home, um, but can be done.
I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought there might be some oral on top of it, but. Well, I figured between the ones from Dusty and this one, we might get lucky is what I thought. Because we got three from Dusty. We got a couple of threes or twos and a... I don't remember. Two twos and one three. Okay, yeah. Either that or the two threes and one two. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I wasn't sure. And what's really... Huh? Are those Yes. Yes, those were. And what's really cool about there is the same thing like we were talking about. Put the two-cylinder on a three-cylinder three uh, drill head. Yeah. I mean, uh, motor head, uh, grinder. Generator. Too many different things. Yeah. Yep. Now, I learned to do that out in the field because I had to <laughs> many, many moons ago. Is this a really good sharp drill bit? No. The curve is a little bit too sharp. It's a little jagged, um, but I did manage to split the center point okay. And we will see how that drills here too. Nowhere near as nice as my other one, but plenty functional if you're out in the field because that, that was a dull drill bit before. And uh, you can do things. A lot of things, a lot of things in machining, when you learn them and really understand them instead of just, uh, I want to get a CNC machine and then I can make everything. I'll just punch it in my computer. Pfft, bullshit. Bovine manure, excuse me, bovine manure. <laughs> It's not that simple. Um, yes, by extremely expensive tooling, uh, by the CNC's, we've got some in here. Um, we don't use them much. Don't have a need for them right now, and pretty much all of them right now are having problems. Um, they, they have their point. CNC's are good, but learn machining first. Learn metalworking first. <laughs> 